Hey Dumplings, it's Dave Decide. Today I want to get into V's moment during a show that got people scared that he was going to give up. I wanted to get into an update on the Gurumi photos and the legal enforcement issues. I also want to talk about some naughty pics being sent. So hater or not, make sure you subscribe with the notification bell on, grab your dump later, tea spilling mug merch, and let's get into it. The internet exploded as RM specifically uploaded a bit of a naughty picture. It wasn't anything actually naughty or nasty, but when ARMY sees shoulder, we tend to freak out. But after the TMA, BTS decided to hop on Weavers to thank ARMY. Of course they would, they won like so many awards, and they had to thank the people that made it possible. I felt like maybe the TMA hit BTS at a weird time. I think a lot of them had a lot to do in terms of solo stuff, because typically they'll go on a live stream to thank ARMY, but after the show, they actually did not, and but they did post a lot instead, which is also nice. Jungkook didn't post anything right away, but when he woke up the next morning, he made sure to send a selfie and thank ARMY. He apologized as he was super tired the night before, and made it up to us. Tang talked about his experience on the stage, and that he hadn't heard ARMY's cheer for a long time, and he was super excited and happy to hear everyone again. I can see how this would have been so special to him. Tang hasn't put any music out yet, and the most interactions he is getting from ARMY is either from his non-musical appearances like Fashion Week or Radio Host, and so he hasn't performed live in a minute. Jin made a post talking about how he had arrived safely at home. He was eating chicken and thanked armies for voting. It was pretty obvious that each of them was not together after the show, that they all went their separate ways to do some of their own things. Or since the award ceremony might have been really late, they all just went to bed. Now RM actually posted something that got armies all riled up. He posted a bath pic where he was soaking in a tub, and you can see his feet, and the clear water. You also see Dory from Finding Nemo, and of course a heart finger. There's nothing here that is explicit except maybe if you like feet, then there's that. But in terms of RM being shirtless or naked, you don't see any of that. In fact, RM could never bathe naked. He could just be wearing a bathing suit, similar to how they bathe when the cameras are on. I too never like to see my naked body. It's too much naked for me. I'm afraid I'll blush if I see myself. I'm joking. But yeah, people freaked out over the RM photo, and there even happened to be a viral tweet where someone tweeted out saying that RM definitely sends pictures, referring likely to sending nude pictures of people. Of course, all of this is just ARMY's imagination, and that's typically what drives these tweets. A BTS member can literally just show their shoulders, and the fandom will picture the member naked. I mean, V taking a photo showing his shoulder is considered him sending a nude. Like, it's nowhere near that, but people think it is. The fandom could not imagine why RM would post that, and there was even this comment going around saying that K-pop fans are always asking the fans to not sexualize the band, but then RM comes out and then posts this type of stuff. But it's funny because this content isn't sexual. Again, unless you count feet, but it's always hilarious to see the reaction online. There was definitely a lot to talk about when BTS performed at the TMA. They performed yet to come and it was such a beautiful performance. They always kill it. I know lately there's a lot of comments floating around over laziness and the fact that BTS released an anthology and yet to come doesn't have choreography. But you have to put yourself in their shoes and understand that they can't really do much right now in terms of going full out with a choreo and tour when they aren't going to be full BTS for a little bit when the military happens. So give them a break on that. They still sound amazing and it's a good performance regardless. During yet to come, some people who were at the award show managed to record BTS performing. But allegedly the people at the show noticed that V was messing with his in-ears. If you're unaware, these are earpieces that allow you to hear yourself sing or hear instructions given by the staff. Sometimes there's also lyrics playing in the ears so you don't forget the words and there's also a countdown. So it'll say two, three, four verse and then chorus and then bridge. So you don't miss your cue. Someone recorded V seemingly trying to either take it off or just messing with it. Sometimes these things malfunction or don't get the signal correctly so the artist might hear static or something and that can affect their singing. But basically some people were very upset that the staff did not fix this for V and that V was clearly having a hard time. Now I'm not sure if they were joking or not but some people were saying that after seeing that they started to cry and I think that is a bit much. People were thinking that V was extremely frustrated with that and honestly it's not the worst situation. They've likely had this happen to them so many times. They know how to manage even if you can't hear yourself or where the cue is, you can look around at your members and see what they're singing and then pick up on where you'd come in and you'd be fine. It's not that big of a deal. And to be honest, I don't think V would have been frustrated enough to want to give up or get super upset. He's also super professional. So even if he was frustrated, we definitely won't see it on his face. But I'm going to be posting the reaction to the performance on my Patreon soon. So if you want to check that out with me and I break the performance down, I will link the Patreon down in the description. I think oftentimes armies think that the boys are suffering when it's just a small 
and convenience that happens to every singer. In fact, it's moments like this that actually show the world that you are truly a professional and you know how to manage a situation that didn't go as planned. And BTS are kings of this all the time. They also manage to finesse the media too in many ways and sometimes it is best to not address or answer anything as it could make it worse. The situation recently with V and Jenny has gotten a lot crazier, specifically because it is believed that nothing can be done about it and this is very interesting. A cybersecurity person, these people tend to work with the police force, some are just working for themselves. The identity and qualifications of this person is not revealed though. But this person did reveal that the identity of Gurumi Haribo, the alleged hacker or photoshopper, will never be public or is very unlikely to even be found. Saying since Gurumi was using Gmail and another app called Telegram to post these photos or communicate, this will make the capture of this person extremely unlikely. I will talk more about this in a minute. Others believe that since Gurumi is confident in what they're saying and not even close to being scared to be caught, then Gurumi must be telling the truth and the photos are not a lie. And the accusations of blackmail, hacking, or extortion, which are illegal, are not, are not accurate claims since they cannot be proven. Since we don't know the identity or even the motive, which has been a question for a long time, right? Like why do this? What is the point? Gurumi stated that they did not receive any legal papers or anything like that as of now. And I don't know if it's because that is a lie or not, because it's quite simple to just send an email. I mean, Gurumi's email has been made public. So if YG or police officers were to send an email, I think it would reach Gurumi regardless of its location or if the identity was discovered. Now, the reason why Gurumi is so difficult to locate is because of sites like Telegram and Google. They do not give out personal information. So allegedly, if police officers were to request a Telegram or Google to hand over the IP address of Gurumi, it would be ignored or denied. Telegram was involved in the nth room case and it was even difficult to discover the criminals because the app that they used was Telegram. And if you don't know anything about the nth room case, I suggest you look it up. It's a lot to go over and something that you'd read about in true crime cases or something. And it's very dark. I don't even know if I can talk about it on YouTube. But since a dark case like that and people's lives at stake wasn't even allegedly enough to get personal information, people don't think a case involving V and Jenny would result in them handing over personal information on Garumi. Google, however, I don't know how accurate, but it is reported that in cases of emergency, they will hand over the private information to officers. However, I also think if you can somehow talk to a judge and get this case to trial, the judge can subpoena Google and Telegram to get them to speak in court. However, it's very unlikely as no tangible damage has been done, like nothing they can report. So if they were to take Gurumi to court, they can't really prove why this person would do this and they can't prove financial damage. Like in order for someone to go to jail, you have to prove sort of damage. Like if I say I'll kill someone, that's not against the law and I can't get arrested unless that person actually does end up dead. So I don't know if that is true. Just my theory and conspiracy. I don't know the law like that and especially the Korean law. So take that with a grain of salt. I am just hoping to open up the conversation and see what you all think about this. Let me know what you think and make sure you check out my Patreon for more videos. Link down below. Thanks for this lovely comment right here. Love you. Bye.